So if you're like many of our clients, your weight loss journey probably is focused mainly on what to restrict in your diet. But is that really the right way to go about losing weight? One of our favorite pieces of advice is this. Don't fix what isn't broken. What do we mean by that? Stay tuned because we're going to talk about that today. Also eating too much processed sugar. So I'm Stephanie and I'm here with Jane and we're the Nourishing Gurus and we help women over 50 stop yo-yo dieting and in a healthy and sustainable way and feel good in their bodies again. If you like what we're saying today, we would love it if you could give us a like and subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified of when we post new videos with exciting information for you. So if you aren't having the success you were hoping for when it comes to losing weight, we get it. It can be super frustrating. And if you're frustrated with lack of weight loss and want to make progress, being more restrictive might seem like the way to go. But is it? You know the saying, don't fix what isn't broken. You're probably wondering what that has to do with weight loss. But the best way to illustrate it, how we apply this strategy is to share a case study with you. This perfectly exemplifies what we mean by this and, and how most women go to much greater and painful lengths to lose weight than is actually necessary. So Lisa is one of our past clients. She's a postmenopausal woman who was frustrated with her 20 plus pounds that she'd been carrying around for the past few years. And when we first met her, she shared that she'd been on and off several different diets of varying degrees of success. The problem was she kept giving up after a period of time once she got tired of the food that she was eating and all the restrictions she was required to follow. Lisa's assumption for her lack of progress was that she was eating too many carbs, which included the occasional toast at breakfast, banana her smoothie, potatoes at dinner, and a couple slices of pizza occasionally on Fridays, all of which she loved. But when we reviewed Lisa's food and lifestyle intake form, we noticed that she actually was eating quite healthfully. What stood out to us was not Lisa's carb intake, but that she was eating too much at night. When we dug a little deeper, we discovered that this was mainly because she skipped her afternoon snack. So once dinner rolled around, she would overeat and eat way too quickly quickly because she was starving. And then she would often snack into the evening, sometimes out of habit or just sometimes because she still felt hungry. So newsflash, Lisa did not need a complete diet overhaul filled with unnecessary restrictions. What she needed was a few key habit changes. So we sent Lisa home with three pieces of advice. Number one, eat a healthy mid-afternoon snack to calm down her blood sugars. Number two, slow down her eating pace at dinner to allow the fullness hormone leptin to kick in before eating more than her body really needed. And hence, she would feel more satisfied without turning to night snacking. And finally, fast after dinner until the next morning. We also designed a few personalized midday snacks for Lisa and discuss the strategies on how to eat more mindfully at dinner. Thanks, Steph. Yeah, we loved working with Lisa and she's just such a perfect example of this whole theory. It turns out that we coached her for another few weeks and she slowly shed all the weight that she wanted to lose. She was so happy because as it turned out, it wasn't carbs that were the problem. That's not what was broken in her eating plan, right? And she realized she didn't have to give up some of her favorite foods as long as she ate them in moderation. And she was able to just reach her goal with a few key habit changes. That's what did the trick. So the bottom line is you don't need to fix what isn't broken. Often you don't need a complete diet overhaul. And we frequently see many postmenopausal women practicing too many restrictions. And then they don't get the nutrients in the proper balance that they need to really thrive after 50. So how can you avoid falling into the same trap that Lisa did? So here's an exercise for you. Track your eating for three days, noting the time of day and what you have for your meals. Be honest with everything you eat and drink. And when analyzing your journal, you want to notice if your problem area has more to do with a habit than specifically the food that you're eating. Yes, yes, yes. There are nuances to this approach because it's still important to balance your meals and eat healthfully, of course, but you want to be sure you're focusing on the right thing and not needlessly removing foods that you truly enjoy. So we work with this so much on habit changes in our three month Simply Nourished program. And while we're nutritionists, of course, we have our philosophy on food, like I said before, but we found that working with hundreds of women that in order to make permanent changes, you need to focus on habits 
real habit changes that get to the root of your issues rather than a restrictive diet, which acts more like a band-aid. So we just hear from our clients all the time how freeing it is to have the confidence to know they can do this long term, right? Rather than the, that they have to go on another diet. So if you're interested in not fixing what isn't broken, we open up a few so spots every single month in this transformational program. So just reach out to us in the Simply Nourish link below to see if we currently have space and if it's a good fit for you. As always, we appreciate it if you like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified of all our future content, more support for women over 50, and be sure to check out our next video.